Good morning. Good morning to everyone. I'm Cynthia Hoven, and this is the 12th webinar that I've been doing in the last year and a half. And I'm very, very happy to begin 2022 with our new workshop series. Many of you have been working in these Eurythmy webinars for the last year and a half. And some of you seem to be brand new to our practice. And as you type in your greeting in the chat box, if you're able to do that and get to your chat box, let us know if you're new. That kind of helps me to pace the way that I do the teaching of each lesson. As you know, I do our Eurythmy webinars in modules, and I make each module theme specific. And I try to arrange it so that it is an ongoing learning process for those of you who've been working with me for a long time or who are already familiar with Eurythmy, but it's also a welcoming to those of you who are new. I'm looking at the names of the attendees. It seems that we might have a few new people with us, so I welcome you. This journey and the journey that follows it, so from now until almost Easter, we'll be looking at the journey of the, the long scope of human existence from long before we were born and in our process of becoming, and the journey that we go through after we die, and the journey that happens as we return to our embodiment on the earth. The Eurythmy webinars, these morning classes, will be the experiential part of the journey. And they're also really designed to match very well with the webinar lecture series that I'll be doing for the next five weeks in this series, and then the next five weeks after that in the following series in which we'll work a lot more with the pictures of exactly what we go through as we enter the world after death. But I'd like you to think of this curve of life and death, of being born as coming, as Wordsworth says, like a comet streaking into the earth with the long comet tail behind you. We have been here before coming into embodiment in each lifetime, doing what we do here, and often forgetting what it is to be in a purely spiritual realm, and then moving towards death, passing through the door of death, returning with the gifts of a lifetime into purely spiritual worlds, harvesting those gifts, and then returning again, usually hundreds of years later. So we speak, at least in the terms of anthroposophy, as the long curve of becoming. And as Rudolf Steiner, the articulator of anthroposophy said, our becoming makes God's becoming possible. God becomes through us. Let me give you another couple of words to lay the seeds for what we're doing and what Eurythmy has to do with this journey of life after death. It is important to recognize that the, the essential part of us lives deep in our being and it's still, if you will, young. Our becoming is still really at its beginning. We are not yet the magnificent beings that we are evolving into. And this being is not the physical body, it's your core consciousness. But in order to be living on the earth and individuating and growing, maturing on this long sweep of becoming, we have to be clothed and we are allowed to be clothed in what we call our different bodies. The physical body, this one that we touch, it's the most external. And this is the one that does not go with us through the portal of death. Then we have our life body, which keeps us alive, 
which helps us with all our biological processes, but also, interestingly enough, with our imaginations. And then we have our soul body, the astral body, which is feeling and experiencing all the time. And inside all of that is your I am. And when you really mature, the I am is in a position to observe all the soul processes and not identify with them and also observe the life processes and eventually to feel into the physical body. What does eurythmy have to do with this? Eurythmy as the life body or the etheric body does not die. Even after death, it does not die. But all the experiences that you've had in a life continue to live and vibrate in this etheric realm. And Rudolf Steiner says specifically that the etheric world gladly receives the gifts of your lifetime when you die. And for a long time after a person dies, the effects of their lives are imprinted, inscribed into the etheric world. And because eurythmy moves the etheric body, not just the physical, but the etheric body, eurythmy is a practice that stands right at the doorway to the spiritual world. And so we often know and can practice that the people who live on the other side of the threshold, those who have died, are able to be with us when we do eurythmy. They can perceive with the kind of new different eyes that they have when they do, when we do eurythmy, we can be perceived. And also we're living in the angelic realm. And so one of the things we'll be practicing is how can we sense this life stream in all of our movements? So I'll be paying, calling your attention to that throughout our lessons. With those words, let me just remind you, I hope that you'll be able to join in the Thursday evening lessons. And I want you to know that only people who have registered will have access to the recordings for these lessons, with an exception of this very first week's lessons. This one I'll put out on YouTube for common viewing. But after that, only people who have signed up because it's the work that we're doing is so deep and esoteric that I've, I want people to really commit into it. So as we begin, I would like to start with a poem. I've written to it. You'll get, I've written it down. You'll get it in your PDF after this class. The PDF is attributed to the Cherokee Indian people. I can't be sure. We all know that there are many things attributed to wise and great people of old. We can't tell for sure, but it's a beautiful poem. And it says, speaking of how our etheric body is so much bigger than our physical body, just as the tree does not end at the end of her roots or branches, just as the bird does not end at her feathers or with her winged flight, just as the earth does not end at her highest mountains, so I do not end at my arm, at my foot, at my skin, but I reach ceaselessly outwards into space and time and all time, including my voice, and my thoughts longs for the infinite, for my soul lives in the infinite, in the never-ending universe of stars. So in our eurythmy practice, let's be aware of our true self. We'll begin our eurythmy practice now. Once again, as always, 
choose your space. I hope you have a place which is as free from distractions as possible. And I have about 10 feet on each side and about eight feet forwards and backwards that I can move in. I hope you have that kind of space. I can lift my arms and sink them. So if you can have that, that will be the easiest for you. As we begin our Eurythmy practice, take your place. Standing quiet. I'm going to begin with the peace exercise, familiar to some of you, perhaps new to others. But I will begin speaking the whole introductory meditative words to this. Think before you start. You were as big as the universe before you were born, expanded in a sphere, in a great sleep consciousness to the ends of the world. And then when the time came to be born, this great sphere that you were compressed itself and grew smaller and smaller, passing through the world of the stars, passing into our solar system, through our planets, and became a small ball of light that still contained everything in a microcosmic space. And this sphere of light was laid into the womb of your mother. And there it grew and it grew and it grew in warmth and love until it was born onto the earth. And born onto the earth, at first it had no power, but it stretched into these limbs, into the body, until it was strong enough to stand. And all of these words of introduction are to help us recognize the change between living in the infinite sphere and in three-dimensional Cartesian space. As you learn to stand up, the sphere, the, the light that you are, begins to settle in your heart, the space of your heart chakra. And then you have to get used to feeling up and down, right and left front and back. And now, assuming that you can move and walk, you take all of these experiences quite for granted. Every time you do your rhythmy, create that imagination instantly in yourself. And now we're going to elaborate the experiences of the different places of space. The dis the first sphere that we're direction we will work with is up and down. High above your head shines the stars, all the stars in the sky. You don't have to move your arms. I'm just indicating where to put your attention. Imagine one star above your head that is your light, your muse, your guardian. Let the light from that star inspire you to stand straight noble, worthy. And now let the light from that star shine down into the crown of your head, shine down through your back, align your spine so that you're straight and tall, shine down into your legs, into your feet and into the center of the earth. You are connected to heaven and earth. You are standing in light, living light. Sometimes you can feel like a lightning rod holding this powerful presence in yourself. Always begin your eurythmy with this feeling. And now, this is not all because we have arms and spread your arms out to the right and to the left. And feel how zillions of miles below the stars and thousands of miles above the center of the earth is this realm of your human existence where we connect to the natural world, to the sense world, and to humanity. Now you understand the meaning of the cross above, below, right, and left. And at the cross point is your heart. 
experiencing all of this. Now there's one more dimension. We don't have this uh, and such an obvious relationship to it, but it's the backbone of our existence. And that's the difference between front and back. So pay attention to that for a moment and notice that we have been made, we've been created in such a way that we can touch the sense world. In the course of our lives, we are constantly woven into the allure of the sense world, where we get all of our impressions through the eyes and our hands and our mouth and our nose. And in contrast, the space behind us is largely forgotten. But in Eurythmy, we discover that the space behind us is the space where the archetypes of the physical world are. And I like to call that our birthright. If you can always remember the backspace in your life, you walk through the world differently. Feel it now. The space behind you, the back door to your heart. All right, you have come from the stars. You are a small, infinitely wonderful ball of light. You were born, you stand in your bodies upright. What we just did in a five minute preparation, we'll do now and learn to do that in just a momentary tuning. So as if it were the beginning of your class now, please once again, step into your Eurythmy space and instantly align yourself with the light above your head. Feel your presence. Now we're going to continue. Spread your arms wide. Feel the cross. All the six directions. You're in balance here. And now you're going beyond your fingertips like the tree does not end at her roots and branches, like the bird does not end at her flights. You go beyond your fingertips and extend into your etheric body, your life body. And now we're going to leave this place of balance and begin our first moving experience. We grow down, going down, we ignite the feeling in ourselves. I'm so glad to be in a body. I've spent my life here in this body. I feel the power of blood and muscles. Clench your fists. Thank you for this experience. Release your arms. Stand and let yourself be drawn up to the heights of heaven. Don't look up. Stretch and feel yourself in this movement and feel connected to the stars above your head, to the forces of lightness. Come back and spread your arms wide. Hold the balance in the middle. And now this front space, step forward and feel. I love the world of the senses. Beautiful to be, to see flowers and trees and so on. And now your imaginary, not your, your unseen, I should say, angel taps you on your back and says, don't forget to always think of your spiritual guardian, your angel, your help, your roots. And now finally come and put your hands one upon the other at your heart and feel within my heart, the whole world is inscribed in eternity. We'll re repeat this, and in doing so, we're going to pay special attention to the etheric nature of our movements. So know that you don't end at the ends of your fingers or your toes. Know that you, have, you are inscribed in living space, in etheric space. So as you go down, feel in yourself, feel how your hands are moving a whole globe, like a bubble, like a sphere of space. 
down into gravity. Turn your hands up. And we have to train ourselves to experience this, but you're not just moving your body. Feel as if you've got a whole bubble of water, a whole sphere of etheric energy around you. Go up into light. Spread your arms wide. Feel the underside of your arms as you do this. Do the middle. Now as you go forward, thankful for the world, feel the whole front of your arms and imagine the, the water ripples that are happening when you move in the etheric. Feel the back of your arms. Feel the back space. And now bring your hands together, feeling yourself moving through etheric space. We'll do that once again. Feel yourself not ending at your fingers or your toes. Go into the great space around you. And now we go. And now we say the words of this prayerful movement. May peace be below me. And moving through space, may peace be above me. May peace be all around me. May peace be before me. Feel the back of your arms. May peace be behind me. And may peace be within me. In this position now, friends, you are feeling yourself connected to that original universal light that is now in your heart. This beautiful, tender experience that we can touch when we're in relation to, to deep love, relationship to our conscience, to our sense of truth and caring. So hold your hands here for a moment. We're going to do now the exercise of contraction and expansion. And every time we come back to here, feel that you're looking for and touching this inward space. I'm going to take a couple steps closer to the screen. You don't need to move. This is your seed, your small ball of light. And now in this exercise that many of us have done before, unfold your arms, practicing how you don't end at your fingers or toes, but you go beyond them. My experience is that I go way out to the stars there, but I still stay grounded because as a human being, I'm responsible for my body. So I connect heaven and earth in my eurythmic practice. And now I bring all of that back into my heart. I feel that kindly. I feel that light that is my seed force, the universe inside of me. And now I go back even as a flower unfolds, growing roots, growing stem and leaves, and blossoming and inviting the insects to come and feeling the warmth of the sun, open your heart full hearted. And now bring sun forces, light forces back into your heart. Now go deep. And find that turning point of energy where the seed of your heart begins to blossom or grow and sprout. And bring it in and always feeling the space that you're moving through. That's essential for our eurythmy practice. And those who are with us can spiritually those who have died can feel 
that we are moving more than our physical bodies. We're moving in this etheric dimension. And open wide, gently, organically. All right. Drop your arms for a moment. We'll pick that up again right away. Let's just look for a second, the difference between physical and etheric moments, movements, just an instance. If I do this physically, I might just do like this, right? How unsatisfying. But as a physical movement, I feel this river of life extending through me, this river of life, this river of etheric energy moving all around me and through my own body, through my arms, moving all around me and through me. I'm learning to experience the laws of the etheric movement, which means moving in fluid time. So once again, from the seed in your heart, unfold. And we don't go laboriously slowly. That doesn't really help. We go, we look for the proper timing of the etheric world as we do this, which is not over-controlled and open wide. And this time I will speak the beautiful poem that we have learned to do with this sound, with this, with this movement here. I'll speak it. I don't want you to speak. Just listen. Within my heart shines the light of the sun. Beyond your fingertips, bring it in. Within my soul weave the warmth of the world. I will the light of the sun. I will feel the warmth of the world. Light of the sun pour into me and warmth of the world flow through me. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> As we do it again, we're also going to take a few steps forwards and back so that we engage even more of our body in these smooth movements. Let's prepare that by practicing walking in an etheric way. So as you move, remember you don't end in your feet. Excuse me, I need to cough again. <laughs> but practice spending all of your energy, sending your energy down into your feet as you walk. I'm going to turn and walk sideways so that you can see even more of my legs, we're going to practice walking. Take one step and another. I do not end, my energy doesn't end at the end of my feet. I send my spirit energy down into the earth and I step backwards. And my feet, be aware your feet are carrying your heart. As you walk, feel your energy in your heart, this ball of light. And from your ball of light, send your power downwards so you can be well grounded in your, your rhythmic practice. And as I step with every step I take, I touch with my toes first, whether I'm going forwards or backwards. And again, just one more time. One, two, three, four. 
Now, before I go backwards, I remember my unseen angel encouraging me to feel through my back as I walk. Let all this power flow into my back space. Yes. Through the etheric world that's possible. Can you feel that? All right. Let's integrate that now with the contraction and expansion. Spread your arms wide. Come forwards, talking through your feet, even as you bring your arms together. And now open the seed to Try to feel the etheric space. We lay the seeds so that those who have died can really see us too. We can feel the soft space that they live in. You feel the space around you permeated with love when you get very quiet in yourself. Love and kindness flow through your movements, not just for yourself, but for the whole universe. Within my heart shines the light of the sun. Within my Soul weaves the warmth of the world. I will read the light of the sun. I will feel the warmth of the world. Light of the sun pour into me and warmth of the world flow through me. Thank you. So you can feel this gentle process of movement here in the Eurythmy. When, that was one of the first things that I wanted to be sure we touched today. Now, for those of you who have already done Eurythmy in my classes or in other classes, you know that Eurythmy takes its next step when we work with the sounds of language. And with the sounds of language then, the we are engaging also our core self, the meaning filled self. And so in your rhythm, we know that every sound is not just a like, mechanical vibration in the air, but it's an experience that we have. So we have a different experience if we have an ah, if we speak ah, or e, or k, and b, and t. And I always encourage us, I do it myself all the time, I try to go into nature and experience the quality of sound in nature. To a eurythmist, the whole world is like a mute word, a frozen word, but the shapes of the sounds have made everything that's around us. So if you like, you can try to find that as you go through the world. If you have already done your rhythm with me, you are quite familiar with the gestures for all of the sounds. If you are new, I will encourage you to go back into previous le lessons that I've given or to go in onto my website and find all of the lessons that I've given on the different vowels and consonants. 
and I would pay a special attention to the vowel lessons. And please read all of that about all of that on the PDF file that I'm going to send you because I can't uh, go as deeply into that teaching in this webinar series, but I don't want you to do anything that's not as rich as it can be if you take the time to learn each vowel. But I would like now for all of us to do the vowel sequence that we've worked before, A, A, E, O, and U. These, as you remember, spring from the planets. And as we will talk about today and in the evenings and in the weeks to come, after we die, we will travel through the realms of the planets and we touch these archetypal experiences of the planets until we reach the, the zodiac. And there we are in the realm of the constellations and the consonants. And then when we are reborn, we come back in through the planets. So one part of our journey in this five-week series is to go deeper, more deeply into the planets or into the vowels. So let's begin with the five major vowels, A, A, E, O, and O. I begin my vowel practice always with my heart. And I feel the tender opening with the ah, join me. Remember, you don't speak it. We're trying to make our body speak and impress the sound into the etheric world. That was the ah, try again. What we normally do with our breath, we now do with the etheric body. Remember, you're moving through time, through space, and you're sculpting it with intention when we do these vowels. With contraction expansion, we were just practicing how to flow. Now we sculpt it. As if you want to say to one who has died, perhaps you could practice this. Ah, I show you the gesture of openness. Do you know this? Can you find me if I open? Yeah. One more time, this is the realm, we've been through this, the realm of Venus. Ah, you're imprinting this in the etheric world. So if you've done it well, keep your arms where you are for a second. If you've done this and you don't end at the end of your fingers or your toes, at least your whole room is radiating with this power that you're putting out the shape of your aura. One more time. Ah, you must be firmly grounded in order to actually be the one that sculpts your, the room, the shape that you're doing. I don't want you to go out of your body. I want you to ground your etheric work with intention. There you go. One more time, and then we'll do the sound A once again. Ah, oh, the goddess of love. In the sequence of the vowels, which is not the same as the planet sequence, but we'll deal, deal with that later. The next sound is the A. This is closing our gates. Let's go back into the ah, and now cross your arms one across the other. A. Do this again. Open your arms. And now a feeling of crossing the gate. And you remember in our learning about incarnation, the, owl, the A is necessary for us to become really vital on the earth. To say, I am inside my own body and I can separate myself from you. And the next sound, if you remember, is the sound E from the inside of your heart. We learn to stand in balance between heaven and earth. Practice moving in the etheric space, E. 
You can have either right or left hand up. In fact, it's good to alternate. The difference is which hand is your heart hand, whether your heart hand is going towards heaven or going into earth, and what the will hand is doing is a complement, heaven or earth. All right, again, remember to feel yourself moving the space around yourself in two directions. Mm. Don't say it. Sculpt that and press it into space. And again. Mm. And again. Mm. When you feel that you become visible to the world around you, to the space around you, once again, imagine almost as if you, you are cut out like a cookie cutter, only even much, much bigger than that. All right. And the fourth sound in the standard vowel series is O, the sound of wisdom, the sound of embrace, sound of community, O. And again, I drop my arms and now I stretch to the right and the left. I feel both arms at the same time. I don't lose my sense. I awaken my consciousness to what I'm doing in space. Oh. And again, feeling how much can I love? How big is my community? How big is my world? And again, oh, good. And the last of the major vowels, we'll learn more later. The last of these is the oo. The oo is a sound that feels like roots. So begin your oo by feeling yourself rooted through your legs and your hands on the earth. And now you're going to keep your bones parallel as you lift them upwards and keep sending your energy down into your feet. Have roots on the earth, even as you have roots in the sky. Can you feel that? Oh. Release it. And again, as I bring my arms together, I'm bringing this etheric space together. I'm narrow, narrowing it. I'm holding it. I am lifting it. Oh. And release. And. Oh. And release. All right. Take a moment to reflect on what you have been practicing. This Maybe I'll say this is like soul gymnastics, but that really is not at all enough to describe you with me. But what you've been practicing, integrating intention and soul and flow with body. Okay, let's go through those five vowels again in standing. We begin with Ah, don't speak it, but move it. I don't end at my fingertips. So from the tips of my fingertips, I bring my hands together. They are already crossing right now, even though not physically. My etheric light rays are crossing, crossing, cross, culminate when I touch. E. I come back into my core and I move open two directions, feeling both arms at the same time. E. Oh, both arms are working in harmony as I drop them, as they find each other, and then together they can create the O. Oh. And both arms are moving together. You doing that? And then from below, you root yourself and grow yourself both. Ooh. 
And again. Ah. Hey. Go beyond your fingertips as you stretch from your heart. Connect your heart to the universe. E. Oh. And. There are two more major vowels that we also want to touch now because they are related to two more of the, the sound experiences we have passing out of life into death. And those are the sounds of the sun and of the moon. The sound of the sun is the sound au, au. And as, as you know, that's related to the great Hindu myst Sanskrit mystery word, Aum, which contains with the ah, the beginning of all things, and with the u, the end of all things, Aum. That's the sound of the sun. The sound of the moon, in contrast, is I, which is almost soft and magical. So let's begin with the sound ow. We start with this experience of ah, but we won't do it with both hands. We'll only do the ah with half of our body, one side, right or left. And with the other sound, we complete the experience with the sound ooh. So remember this ooh? Now I've put that ooh over there. I've got ah working here and ooh working here. So again, I channel my feeling of awe and wonder. Oh, with the sound ow. Right or left, it doesn't matter. Or up and down, it doesn't matter. We usually do it upwards. Ow. One arm makes a beautiful ah, the other, the parallel to it. Remember, you're going, you're filling the space with majestic wonder. Ow. Oh. And the other side. Ah. Oh. And again. Ow. Oh. And the other side. No. And the sound I. And the sound I is as if you are watching moonlight glide across a, a great meadow, or alternately as if you're stroking a cat, the softness of space. So again, feel the magic etheric space around you and glide your hands from one side to the other. And I have to explain this. One, one hand here, the short I, this begins as a short hand, the other hand is extended. I glide my hands from side to side. In the middle, they cross. So the extended hand moves more quickly. I pass through the center. And now the hands change so that the other hand becomes longer and this hand stays behind. So again, I glide from here, the hands cross and the other hand moves beyond. Again, they cross and so that's the technicality. Now make a picture image for yourself as you inscribe this into the etheric world as if you are perhaps stroking the soft hair of a cat, or you have the silver magical moon forces gliding across the plain, or you want to tenderly quiet your infant. This is the eye. 
And remember, once again, it's not just your arms. It's the smooth movement as you sculpt space. Sculpting space, you are working with your soul. My soul feels so gentle here. Ah. Let's do the owl again. My soul feels majestic and full of worship. Oh, and so on. All right. Having introduced these, once again, if these are new to you, go onto my website, learn them all, and deepen your experience so they become profoundly real for you. But we'll take the next step anyhow and go through the planets in a different order. The order I, I am going to teach you now is the order that we go through the planetary spheres when after we have died. So listen carefully. This is a big teaching here. We go after we die. We expand out as our tiny golden ball becomes the universe again, we pass out to the sphere of the moon, to the sphere of Venus, Mercury, to the sphere of the sun, beyond to the sphere of Mars, Jupiter, and to Saturn. And each of these resounds with a different vowel feeling because each of these vowels is the expression of these different, these different godlike beings. So we're going to move from the moon sound, I, to the Venus sound, ah, to the Mercury sound, E, to the sun sound, ow, to the Mars sound, A, to the Jupiter sound, ooh, and to the Saturn sound, uh, Jupiter sound, O, oh, and to the S Saturn sound, ooh. We'll go through that seven times now. You will begin in inscribing it in yourself as an experience, and then this will be a real part of your journey of practice over the week to come. So we'll begin with the moon sound. After we die, the first realm that we will enter is the moon. And this is part of the experience, this feeling of being in soft space, I. And then after some time and after many experiences, we open and enter the realm of pure beauty and love, ah. After we pass through that sphere and have learned everything we can from it, we enter the sphere of E, the Mercury sphere. And then comes a real turning point when we enter the sphere of the majestic source of all life and love, Ow, oh, the sun sphere. After that, we enter the realm of Mars, which carries certain archetypes of speech and form, A. We pass beyond that to the sphere of Jupiter, universal wisdom. And then we pass beyond that to the edges of our, of our sun space, Ooh, ancient and wis ancient wisdom. And in that sense, Neptune, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto are a different part of the story that I won't go into now, but we don't consider that. So after Saturn, we enter the realm of the constellations, different, different dimension there. All right, let's do that six more times. The moon sphere, I. Venus, ah. Mercury, E. 
sun. How Mars is Jupiter. Oh, Saturn. Oh. And again, on. Feel what you're doing to the space you live in. Venus, ah. Back to your heart and then Mercury, e. Then the lofty sun, ow. Beyond the sun, we enter the realm of even greater archetypes, a. Oh. Oh. Saturn. And again, in the room around you begins to vibrate with what you're doing. And the beings from the other spheres draw near. We'll speak more about that in the evening classes. Moon, I. Venus, ah. Mercury, E. Sun, oh. Another great movement into the uh, bigger archetypes, A, Mars. Oh, Jupiter, Saturn, oh. what? Yeah. This has to do with you, but in our work with our friends who have died, we also are giving them, offering them some understanding of these spheres which helps to illumine their, their journey. Ah. Your first experience, dear friend, is remembering the earth. Your next experience, ah, is touching in with your goodness. E, what have you learned about human beings? The standing in your core, ow. Oh. Did you find the source of all light and love in your life on Earth? A, Mars. Oh, wisdom. Oh, Ooh, the bearer of cosmic memory. And one more time, I, ah, Venus, he, how, oh. oh, the grand archetypes of form. Oh, the lords of wisdom. Ooh. Cosmic memory and karma. All right, good. So let me review a little bit and then build the, the last exercise for today, or just touch on it. You have learned, first of all, how to move. And that will be a part of your practice, if you can do these a little bit in, in your daily life. And then the, a, the contraction expansion, and then learning how to walk with that, with the contraction expansion. 
And then now this series of seven vowels. And I invite you to do them each day and with the intention of learning for yourself and connecting with all that's going on in the etheric world. And I say that and still say, be sure in you do, as you do your eurythmic practice that you're grounded because I want to pay, uh, give that a special word of caution when we're dealing with those who have died because I don't want anyone with an excess of rapture to leave their body to go out in themselves. Our journey while we're on the earth is to sanctify the body out of working out of our core. So too much stretching into the etheric is counterproductive. Stay grounded and learn to be etherically effective while you're in your body. All right. Another essential part of our journey with those who have died is the Eurythmy Hallelujah. If you already know it, include that in your practice, but I'm not going to do that with you today. I'm going to speak now the poem that we're going to develop in the weeks ahead. Beautiful poem. I've been waiting for years, a year and a half, to do this with you. And um, yeah, we'll just begin with it today. Listen up. I was born of the shining of distant stars. I drew their beams with me from afar. I was born of the gold of the radiant sun, of the light of the world ere the earth begun. Born I was of the silver eye, of the guardian moon keeping watch on high. Born of the flame's intensity, born of the wild winds roaming free, born of the waves that lap the shore and the rock that hides the glittering oar. Born I was from out of the hole, I bear the world within my soul. This is one of my very favorite poems to teach in a live class. I almost always choose to bring this as our task. And yeah, it speaks of this journey of coming in to the body. The poem was not written by an anthroposophist. It is attributed to some anonymous author, but I would not be surprised if it was a Celtic writer because these are the mysteries that the Celtic folk articulated. So let me speak you through these steps again. I was born of the stars, of the sun, and of the moon. These are the first three steps, and they come from a um, super, from a cosmic dimension, from the stars to the sun to the earth. And then I was born out of the four elements. I was born out of fire, air, water, and earth. And then the last line of the poem says, I was born from the whole, and I bear the world within my soul. So let me speak the whole poem again so you can track it. I was born of the shining of distant stars. I drew their beams with me from afar. I was born of the gold of the radiant sun, of the light of the world ere the earth begun. Born I was of the silver eye of the guardian moon keeping watch on high. Born of the flame's intensity, right? We carry the ego, the fire nature in our ego, in our I am. 
born of the wild winds roaming free. We bear that air in our astral body. Born of the waves that lap the shore. That's our etheric body. And the rock that hides the glittering ore. That's our physical body. Born I was from out of the hole. I bear the world within my soul. So beginning next week, we'll work the, the form for that. But I want to do just these last two lines with you. Born I was from out of the hole. Those of you who've done your with me will know how obvious we want to do the sound for the word bear. This is the B, isn't it? Or for the word born, I'm sorry. This is the first word of that line, born. As if your spirit home, you leave your spirit home and your mother body and your mother earth wrap you into your incarnation. Born I was, and now we'll use, do the word out of the hole, born, the O. Born I was from out of the hole. And believe in as much as you can, sun, moon, and stars, and all the elements. And now we're going to do one, a new sound, the sound er. I bear the world within my soul. The sound er, some of you know, it's an inside out O. Er, O and er are partner sounds. You're going to turn your hands out. I bear the world. And now take the entire world and make a little O and bring it to your heart and feel this place of cosmic light in a little O in front of your heart. I bear the world within my soul. Do that three more times. Born I was. Born I was. From out of the hole, the biggest universe you can imagine. And I turn the world inside out. I bear the world within my soul. And again, born I was from out of the hole, I bear the world within my soul. One last time, and once again, the, our core practice, you, we, I don't speak when I do your with me, so I'll model that for you now. I've internalized the line, so I go, I'm conscious of how I'm sculpting space. Now, as we draw our practice to a close, fold your arms in front of you. Breathe. Harvest the fruits of this hour. And release. 